This 12 minute video will demonstrate the anterior cervical discectomy and fusion surgery in a stepwise fashion. Patient has been positioned and draped appropriately. On the right side is the head end marked by H while F denotes the foot end. An oblique line running from top left to bottom right corner marks the anterior belly of sternocleidomastoid muscle. Skin incision at appropriate level is taken following a subcutaneous infiltration of adrenaline solution. After skin and subcutaneous dissection, the longitudinal muscle fibers of platysma are identified and divided along the line of incision. A plane is created below the platysma using a monopolar electrocautery or a Metzenbaum scissors. A plane being created on the cephalad side and the same is repeated on the caudat side. Ethylon 2.0 skin sutures are taken through the platysma which converts the transverse incision into a vertical one aiding the exposure. The investing layer of the deep cervical fascia is dissected and the aim is to identify the loose areolar tissue on the medial side of sternocleidomastoid muscle for interfacial dissection. Blood vessels crossing the surgical plane are either ligated or coagulated at this stage. The superior belly of omohyoid muscle is usually encountered at C6 level and to help with exposure can be retracted medially with trachea or can be divided. The internal carotid artery pulsations are palpated and the dissection continues between the viscera that is the trachea and the esophagus on one side and the carotid sheath on the other side. The dissection can be done bluntly using a finger or two peanut sponges. The prevertebral fascia is dissected and the discs can be identified as small hills and the vertebral bodies as valleys. A clouded retractor is used to retract the visceral structures medially. The trick is to expose an additional level so that the tension on the viscera is minimal which prevents the post-op dysphagia. A pre-bent 18 gauge spinal needle is inserted into the disc face to confirm the level using a C-arm and the level is marked. Both the longus coli muscles are elevated superiorly up to the uncovertebral joints with the suction tip being used as a retractor. The vertebral artery is unprotected at the level of the disc as it does not lie in the bony neuroforamina and extensive lateral dissection can endanger it. There are no blood vessels over the disc but bleeding can be encountered from nutrient foramina that are usually located at the mid-body level. After measuring the depth of the incision, self-retaining retractors are applied and care is taken that there is no herniation of the muscle or the esophagus from under the blade. The anterior annulus of the affected disc is incised using a 15 number blade on a long handle and the sharp end of the blade should always be pointing away from the midline. Disc material is scraped off using a curet till the uncovertebral joints are clearly visualized.
using the midline and the orientation of the end plates as reference points, Casper distractor pins are placed and the disc space is gently distracted. The remaining disc material and the posterior annulus is removed and this helps us identify the vertical fibers of the posterior longitudinal ligament. The posterior longitudinal ligament or the PLL takedown can be done in the midline or sometimes a plane can be found on the lateral edge of the PLL which was seen here. To perform it, a nerve hook is used to elevate the PLL of the dura and the PLL is incised using a 15 number blade. Note that it is not mandatory to perform it in all cases and we prefer to do it when we suspect herniation of the disc fragment behind the PLL. The end plates are decorticated using a 3mm coarse diamond burr or a curette with the ultimate aim of flattening the smile shaped disc base and converting it into a rectangular box. Osteophytes, if found, can be removed at this stage. A sizer is used to determine the graft or the cage size. The distraction on the Casper pins should be released in order to assess the fit of the sizer. A cage or a graft of the same size as the sizer can then be gently hammered into place. The size of the plate is such that the upper and the lower screw holes are just above and below the respective end plates to prevent an adjacent segment disease. The required screws are placed into the plate and ultimately locked onto the plate. Following a thorough wash, the viscera is inspected and a drain is placed into the pre-vertebral space. The platysma is closed with interrupted absorbable sutures and the subcuticular stitch is taken for the skin. An appropriate dressing is applied and this concludes our video.